there are few reasons why COVID-19 was able to spread all over the world. Among them, one of the biggest reasons would be the asymptomatic infection of COVID-19. There have been countless theories that tried to explain the asymptomatic infection of COVID-19 ever since its worldwide spread. However, according to a report made by NEJM in 2020, nearly 50% of the confirmed COVID-19 cases at a long-term care residency in the U.S. were asymptomatic at the time of diagnosis, which allowed experts to have a precise understanding of the actual scale of asymptomatic infection of COVID-19. And among these asymptomatic patients, approximately 90% showed developed special symptoms after a certain period of time, while only 10% of them remained asymptomatic to the end. In other words, such asymptomatic patients of COVID-19 can be classified into two different categories. The first one is the group of asymptomatic patients who remained asymptomatic until the end. And the other group is the presymptomatic patients who were asymptomatic at the time of diagnosis, but developed a symptom after two to three days. The second reason that caused this kind of mass infection, or, in other words, the COVID-19 pandemic, was that even in the case of those who weren't asymptomatic, the symptoms were very mild. During the early stage of the spread of COVID-19, it was reported that the three major symptoms of COVID-19 were fever, shortness of breath, and sore throat. However, according to a report by Guan in 2020, NEJM, among the patients who were confirmed with a case of COVID-19, only 21.7 of them had a fever of over 38 degrees Celsius at the time they were hospitalized. Moreover, only 13.9% of them had a sore throat, and 18.7% of them suffered from a shortness of breath. Therefore, even if you are infected with COVID-19, there is a relatively high chance that you won't have any symptoms. And even if you do have symptoms, it is even difficult to distinguish it from a common cold, which means that COVID-19 is a disease that is very hard to identify only through symptoms. Meanwhile, unlike the MERS coronavirus, COVID-19 is a virus disease that has equipped a variety of mechanisms that allows asymptomatic patients to easily spread the virus within the local community as large amounts of viruses can be released through the upper airway in the form of droplets even through the early stage of infection. Therefore, because of these three major characteristics of COVID-19, asymptomatic transmission, mild symptoms, release of virus at the early stage of infection, it is extremely hard to distinguish and identify COVID-19 within the community only using visible symptoms, and it can be said that the only way to protect the transmission of COVID-19 spread is to conduct a large-scale epidemiological survey to identify the people who came into contact with the virus and separate them from the community. So, this is how our government came up with the three major axes of COVID-19 management, which are the diagnostic testing, isolation and treatment, and tracking. These three axes must be closely and symptomatically connected to each other to effectively manage COVID-19. If there is a patient who is suspected of being infected with COVID-19, he or she must be diagnosed first. If the result of the diagnosis suggests that the patient is infected with COVID-19, then we must isolate the patient from the local community and provide proper treatment in order to prevent the patient from spreading the virus to other people. At the same time, we must conduct a thorough epidemiological survey to identify the people who came in direct or close contact with the COVID-19 positive. After that, regardless of whether they show any symptoms or not, a large-scale testing must be conducted. This is surely the most accurate and proper way to find confirmed COVID-19 cases. And in this case, the most important thing that we need is an accurate, large-scale diagnostic system. It is very important to make sure that these large-scale diagnostic systems can be implemented as quickly as possible so more tests can be conducted through an accurate testing method. Also, test results must be delivered to the patient or the medical staffs as soon as possible. And of course, such diagnostic methods should be implemented using the correct accurate method. There are three main methods that we can use to diagnose COVID-19. Among them, antigen testing and antibody testing have its own advantages. If we implement these methods, we can create an easy-to-use self-diagnostic kit that allows us to see test results quickly. However, the sensitivity and specificity of these methods are very low compared to the molecular testing method. In particular, the antigen testing method shows a 50-70% to 70 sensitivity compared to the molecular testing method, which means that we can miss one out of every three confirmed cases of COVID-19.
This would make it difficult for us to use the antigen testing method for carrying out the policy that I've mentioned earlier, which is tracking the people who came in contact with confirmed COVID-19 cases and isolating them from the local community. Therefore, it would be safe to say that it would be difficult for us to use the antigen testing method at this stage of the pandemic. In addition, in the case of antibody testing methods, while the sensitivity of the method is high at 95% after 14 to 21 days since the initial symptom has been observed, but given the spread of COVID-19 mostly occurs in the early stage of infection, antibody testing is considered as an inappropriate method to diagnose COVID-19 since it takes too long to achieve a high level of sensitivity. Therefore, the antibody testing method can only be used for checking COVID-19 cases that has already been passed. Considering these factors, the only method that could provide an accurate diagnosis of COVID-19 is the molecular testing method. The sensitivity and specificity of the molecular testing method is over 95%, and it can detect asymptomatic patients even during the early stage of infection, so we are the only country in the world that chose to implement the molecular testing method into the system. And while we utilize these methods to establish an effective diagnostic system for COVID-19, we must also build two additional systems that can support these kinds of diagnostic systems. One of them is the National Quality Management System, and the other one is the Inspection Testing Statistics and Results Management System. Most people think that establishing a diagnostic system for the disease can provide a solution for everything. However, in order to properly use these kinds of symptoms methods to make an accurate diagnosis, in medical institutions a quality management system is essential. And while it is true that such quality control is mostly carried out in laboratories at the internal quality control level, it is also necessary for the government to step up to the plate and make sure that each laboratory is doing their job properly. Also, to manage the quality of testing at external institutions, it is necessary to create a standard substance, and in the case of Korea, K-Quarantine, we have successfully and accurately established the following three systems to support the creation of a quality COVID-19 testing system. And finally, we also need a test statistics and inspection management system. The reason why we need this system is simple. While performing COVID-19 tests can simply be considered as a medical activity at the patient level, the data that we can earn from such practices, such as the number of tests conducted or how the results are distributed across the whole country, will be a very important resource data for identifying the nationwide status occurrence of COVID-19, determining the scale of testing, and the expansion of the testing inspection system. Therefore, establishing a statistical system that allows us to observe the overall situation associated with the testing process will be a crucial step in managing and maintaining the national testing inspection system. And to carry out such activities and projects properly, we need quality control QC materials, diagnostic test kits, and skilled professionals and dedicated institutions that can actually perform such tests. However, in the case of Korea, about 10% of these resources exist in public medical institutions, while the other 90% exist in private medical institutions. Therefore, in an emergency situation like this, where there is a large group of infections, we must come up with a system that allows us to mobilize all of our medical capabilities and capacities, from both public and private sources, so we could respond to the increasing number of infections without any delay. And in order to build this kind of a system, the cooperation between the private healthcare medical system in the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency is crucial. In our case, the medical capacity of our private sector was the most important factor, and the cooperation with the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency was the second. And these test results, as I mentioned earlier, will be collected via online through these DB systems, and the data collected online will be used to analyze the results, the current state of the nation's COVID-19 testing, and the capacity for future COVID-19 testing. And there is another important reason why we must regularly review the test results. The reason is this. When we conduct these kinds of molecular diagnostic tests, we should always be particularly careful about false negative results caused by the genetic variation of the target pathogen, or the false negative positive results caused by the error of the molecular diagnostic reagent. Therefore, by periodically reviewing the results of these tests, we must always look for sudden changes or abnormalities in the test results. In the case such changes or abnormalities are observed, we must review the current status of the reagents, testing institutions, and the overall testing system of our country. And through these activities, we can check the current management status of COVID-19 in our country and the trend of confirmed COVID-19 cases. This can be considered as an advantage of regular review of diagnostic tests. 
And to develop these eight different elements, the WHO also established a detailed response plan in the event of a global pandemic. This response plan consists of various themes such as international coordination, operational support, country readiness, response operations, and accelerating priority research and innovation. The first two focuses on establishing a proper coordination and support plan between different countries, while the next two is centered around finding an effective way to spread and apply such plans. Lastly, the final key word is for conducting various scientific researchers on finding an effective response to COVID-19.